the middle of winter and I've been invited to one of the coldest places that I've ever visited. And the good thing is that it's Chinese New Year, so there's bound to be lots of fireworks and loads of fun. Well, there's a sure sign that Harbin is different. A massive Russian Orthodox cathedral in the middle of a 21st century Chinese city. So this whole church is now a whole museum? St. Yeah. Sophia is a treasure chest yeah. which holds the city's archives. It's a good place to get to grips with its history. When did it change from a Russian town into a Chinese town? Before the Second World War started, yeah. the Japanese started to take over the North Sea to China, right? Yeah. So they kick the Russian away. After the Second World War finished, yeah. the Japanese start to uh, disappear from the harbor yeah. because they lost. They have yeah. to go back, yeah. right? But after three years civil war in China, mm. the People's Republic of China was founded. Well, the architecture is different from China because yeah. of different influence, Russian influence, okay. Japanese influence. So many countries coming. So you wouldn't see many cities like this in China. That's right. So that's the Russians on holiday. Yeah. They swim all the time, just like you did, right? Yeah, that so. is beautiful. My host, Long Mu Li, is here for the first time too. But he has a special interest because Harbin is the home of China's best winter sporting talent. So, Long Mu, what, what's your job? My job is organizing the minor hockey growing in China. Ice hockey, is it? Yeah, ice hockey. Ah. We do lots of minor hockey leagues minor hockey camps. Another job is doing the commentator on ice hockey games. Yeah. yeah I have all the games uh, in Olympics uh, to Vancouver. Wow. And do you, do you drag the goal bit out? It's a goal! No. It's a hit shoot, score! Something like that. Yeah, yeah a little bit high pitch yeah. on the jilla. Yeah, something like that. So what would your ambition be, to commentate on the Chinese ice hockey team in the final? Yeah, my dream is to uh, help Chinese hockey go into Olympics sometimes, or commentate the games for them in the Olympics. That's my dream. I don't know if me and Long Mu will get much winter sports in, because this year there's hardly any snow about. It doesn't look it, but it's minus 25, which is handy because Harbin hosts one of the world's best ice sculpture festivals and there's ice all over the city. So what are we going to see or do here in Harbin? Yeah, we're going to see some fascinating people, see the, yeah. a banner of the history and uh, taste good food and play some fun spots. Wow, that sounds good. Yeah. We're going to be out cram it all in in time. Yep. We will see. I'm cold. Yeah, me too. That's what happens when you stand outside. Around Zhongyang Street, the mix of architectural styles says all you need to know about the Russian influence. And we quickly got to grips with this melting pot of a city. But after half an hour in minus 25, we started to get that other feeling, frozen hands and feet. So it was time to get into somewhere yeah, warm. I've got a feeling that this is the place, yeah? Okay. I don't know what it is. But... Oh my lord. <laughs> the 
This is an amazing discovery. An ear-splitting 12-piece band, all wearing Versace shirts, with a band leader who looks like a mad cowboy. bar belongs to main man, Mr. Jar, and we had to find out why there's an American-style bar in the northeast of China. I've noticed some pictures of, of himself. When, yeah. when did he first get obsessed by the, the American culture and all the American bits? Uh, should be like 20 years ago. He likes American cowboy movie a Ah, uh, yeah, so first from the movies, yeah, and, then, and then obsessed by that. But with Mr. Zha, it's more than a hobby. He is obsessed with acting and costumes. He's even directed and starred in his own movies. The mad thing is that there's the telly there. It's like a film, General Patton, so it's filmed <laughs> itself, but you've cut yourself in it, and it's playing on the bar. That's amazing. I'm a director. He's a big movie fan. Yeah. Uh, I can not see professional, that. but I really want to join the. the yeah. My movie background is all Hollywood, so I have a very good image for Hollywood. Because he's a film, like background of his film, all talking about the Hollywood. Yeah. So he just wanna show the how good Hollywood is in his film. Yeah. 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 He's a big Harbin celebrity and the perfect person to spend time with and learning all about what makes this place tick. <laughs> now I know how Harbin became such a big melting pot, I'm interested to see if there's any traces left of the foreign influences that shaped it. Chinese New Year, and I've come to Harbin in northeast China with winter sports expert Long Mu Li, and we're trying to find out why this place is so unique. Our new friend, the movie mad businessman Mr. Zha, said that to understand why Harbin is such a hybrid, all we had to do was sample its food. This reminds me of Manhattan. We could be in New York. Yeah. Like, got all the cabs, you've got those three, four story buildings. It's amazing. And just like New York, it's got massive crowds queuing up for a great nosh. It was started up by a Russian Jewish family in 1925. Happy hour. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. And of course, the beautiful bread. bread. This is bread. It's made by the beer flower. Traditional butter and jam. It's like being back home. Beautiful. Yeah. And the restaurant itself is a beautiful. Look at the gold in there and the ceiling. It's yeah. a fantastic place. Yeah, 85 years. 85 years. Yeah. Wow. The love of bread is very harbing. It's a local speciality regarded as a real delicacy. Bread or juice? Bread juice. So a fizzy drink made from bread. It smells like crumbs. Yep. Cheers. I never knew that this is the only city in China where they consume as much bread as they do rice. And down in the Turin Bakery, we found out why. A Russian family bought the secret recipe here in the 1900s, and it's been popular ever since. Yep. Mr. Jing Li is the master baker, and he is the keeper of the secret recipe passed down through generations. Has your family been bakers all the way back to the beginning of this oven and this, this bakery? Yes, my family's been doing this for many years. The first two generations were Russian master bakers. Then the new Chinese government took it and changed it to the local Chinese workers. So I'm the fifth generation of bakers. Do you like the bread? Yes, too much. 
Are you a baker? We've got to find out what the secret is, yeah? OK. Just keep it quiet, though, yeah? OK. Me and you. OK. The dough is made from hops, flour and salt and has been through three different fermentation processes before me and Longmu can finally get our hands on it. It smells like a pint of beer. It's making me hungry. These guys make it look so easy, but they are perfectionists. And strangely, none of my loaves really seem to be up to their standards. <laughs> it does sound fun. It's OK? Yeah. No? Yeah, just what I was doing. Uh, Maybe not quite what I was doing. But you wouldn't want a better pair than that, really, would you? Make a little mark so I know which is mine. A little present, yeah, for someone. My one and uh, this one. This is yours. <laughs> no. That's yours. No. <laughs> as well as this beautiful bread, these are other things that they make. This is good old Russian jam and a bit of sausage. And in summer, homemade fruit wine. Oh. And the extraordinary thing about this um, bakery is Russian baking students come here to learn how to make this kind of bread because they've lost that old process of making the lovely Russian bread. So they come here to learn. Perfect. Yeah. Who knows? You son of a... Sorry. OK. I hit you. Just outside Harbin, there's a place where they love to get their hands on my fresh Russian bread. It's called Volga Manor, and it's actually a theme park where you can go back in time and get a feeling of how Harbin looked in the early 20th century. Set in a snowy landscape, the buildings are authentic reconstructions, and the best bit is the theatre, which boasts a real Russian cabaret. <laughs> Twice a day, a troupe of all singing and all dancing performers put on a great show. It's a mixture of modern tunes and old classics, all delivered with that famous Russian love for performance. You got China meets Russia on stage. Woo! <laughs> true cabaret style, the show is a real laugh when the performers start picking out unlucky members of the audience. I like this bit. <laughs> <Woo. laughs> oh. I loved that, didn't you? Yeah, I loved that. Yeah. Yeah, See, I got you, you on stage because I felt that you wanted to get up there and have a little dance, man. Yeah, thank you. Thank yeah. you, buddy. <laughs> As a this way of saying bread. thank you, this me and Longmu handed over a loaf of our freshly baked Turin bread. Is it Russian? It's Russian. Hey! Hang on for that! Well, you know, as the first attempt at Russian bread, you know, I thought we did well, but, you know, the experts, well, I think it was borderline or something. They weren't that impressed. So, to make up for it, we took them outside for a frolic in the snow. Are you ready? Uh, no. Ah! 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 Look what you've done, you broke my hat! <laughs> no, I don't know that. <laughs> I hate you! I win! <laughs> this is the perfect end to the day, yeah? Really? A nice, warm, traditional Russian bath. Oh, <laughs> really? So we don't need to go to the cooler water anymore, right? No, this is your first time, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on! Okay, I would never let you go in any cold water. <laughs> You're like my brother. OK. Russian baths are still really popular around Harbin, but you have to follow a strict routine. <laughs> It starts with a really hot sauna shared with a close friend. Then come the birch leaves, because gentle exfoliation is very healthy. Being thrashed with leaves is good for you, and it helps the skin to breathe properly. Finally, you have to finish off by closing your pores under a really ice-cold shower. One, two, three. 
on the way back into the city, we spotted a sure sign that it was nearly New Year's Eve. Like a kid in a candy store, man. Let me at him. I've never seen such big fireworks in my life. Mm -hmm. Look, look, we've got to get some, yeah? This has got danger written all over it. It's any kid's dream, isn't it? Look at them. Explosions, the smell of sulfur, burning singed hair. That's what fireworks is all about. This is more beautiful. <laughs> she sees me coming. There must be something in my eye that says, get me the biggest firework. Couldn't understand why. What is it about China and fireworks and New Year's? Because uh, the fireworks are going to be really bright, the noisy, yeah. and to kick all the bad luck away. Yeah. So louder the bang, the better. That's all I'm hearing. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Let's get a smaller one. This is crazy. No, I like this one. Yeah, I'm gonna get this one. But we're gonna have fun tonight. Okay. Okay? Yeah? Yeah. Okay. <sighs> <laughs> Before celebrating New Year's Eve with our fireworks, Lomu wanted to introduce me to some of Harbin's other great successes. It's Winter Sports Stars. Is a way to keep warm in the Harbin winter, you've just got to keep moving. The temperatures up here in northeast China are some of the coldest I have ever experienced. But if it doesn't kill you, it can only make you stronger, right? My host in Harbin, Long Mu Li, is China's number one winter sports commentator and he got us special access to watch some of China's top skaters in training. The skaters here, they're the best skaters in China. This is the best figure skating team in China. OK. Yeah. And they, they come here to train? Yeah, for Ooh. the ice dancing, yeah. um, man single, woman single and double. Right, wow. Why here then? Why is this always been famous? Obviously, because it's so cold and everything's frozen over. Yeah, this province. Lots yeah. of people, when they are kids in the primary yeah. school, they have to go to take the skate lessons. Yeah. The ice box is good for the kids because the oxygen percentage is higher than the normal ground, and it's very good for the kids' brain development. You made that up? No, I haven't done it. Will this improve my brain power? Yeah, you can smell the ice a little bit fresh, right? Well, it's cold, yes. Yeah. Brain power. It's good for the bra <laughs> Who did that? <laughs> you see that? Did you see that? Yeah. The gold medalist just sprayed ice at me. <laughs> she's the best skater in China, yeah? Yeah, she's the best uh, double ice dancing in okay. China. And she's going to win a gold medal, are you think, at the next one, or the best chance of winning? She has huge potential. Yeah, here she comes up. Yeah, she's good. Yeah. I told you. Do you do ice skating like this? No, because I play hockey, so I can't wear the figure skate. Right. Yeah. Is that the same as when you couldn't come ice swimming because you, you hadn't got any <laughs> special ice pants to swim in? That's right, that's right. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. And that's why you didn't go in, wasn't it? Yeah. Because you really want... Because I, I... You really want to do yeah. that. No, you can't. I'm ice. You can't. What? You can't. Don't tell me not. Don't tell no, me you, I can't. You have to put your, that's you why. Have to that's your why you're not number one. Because when someone says you can't, you can't do it. Where I could I? feel the friendly rivalry building up between me and Longmu. Okay, I, this guy is driving crazy. So I couldn't wait to get across the city to Harbin's famous curling club. But on the way, we had to pull over because some massive explosions went off just in front of our bus. We'd run into some early New Year's Eve celebrations. I suppose it's only right for the people who invented gunpowder to have such a crazy time with it. And that's why it's amazing! Get out of here, man! Go, go, go! kind of like uh, um, blessing and a prayer 
and to kick all the gold oh. away. And it's good because no one complains, no one cares. It just sounds like half a building's falling down. It's brilliant. The Harbin Curling Club has given China plenty of medal winners. Gold at the World Championships and bronze at the last Winter Olympics. And Harbin's top curlers had turned out to give me a master class. It's amazing. It's like, almost like an art form, the way they glide on the ice. Perfection. Yeah. Now it's my turn. Keeping my balance on the ice was really tricky, so I had to come up with my own curling style. Oh, see, that's better. So they're spinning it. Yeah. Why? Because the, the ice has some, like, uh, fixing on that. So when they spin, they have a, like, curve to get to the tagger. So if you do it straight, mm -hmm. it goes faster than the slides. But if you spin it a little bit, it's, you can control the speed a little bit. It slows yeah. it down. Yeah. <laughs> After a bit of bruising practice, it was time to play for real. And show Longmo who's the boss. I picked up a few tips, but I could see that my curling style was a little bit revolutionary. Don't touch the rock. Yeah, I didn't touch the rock. At any time. I would, uh... It's like so many sports that I love. You need to be talented. Oh, oh, oh. Nah, not good enough. Yeah. You need to be ultra competitive. And of course, you need to make a little oh, bit of luck yeah. of your own. We have a winner. <laughs> Thank you. You loser. You're such a loser. Come on, I come on. Don't don't be like that. <laughs> In Harbin's old district, we went to meet our pal, Mr. Jha, the businessman who loved dressing up. The problem was trying to guess who he'd be dressed as. Hey, yeah, I've been right now. You've got, you've got a new star. <laughs> so, yeah, this is why we dress up like this in the oldest district, or the oldest businessman looks like in the 30s and the 40s. So for the old time, you dressed up like an old businessman. Yeah, you got glasses. <laughs> Mr. Jha grew up in the old district. He said it was the best place to buy props for the film that we were going to make together. It's still like a hundred years ago here. The buildings are old. Like going back in time. Yeah. There's a massive program here to restore all these amazing buildings in the old district to their former glory. There's just so much atmosphere around every little corner. I was sort of joking, saying we've got to make a movie. And now it's just run with it, and it's a huge production. We're going to do it tomorrow. So he's took them down this. This is the old part of town, old market, to get some inspiration and to get some props. Hopefully, but this is like a film set in itself. It's amazing. Yeah, amazing. We followed Mr. Jar around a maze of incredible streets, and finally he disappeared into a secret shop where he came back with some brilliant props. Oh, look, we went a bit crazy. You can always find great antiques or second-hand shops. Look, <laughs> look what we bought, show us oh, it. Okay. I don't know why, I don't know what the film's going to be about, but look. <laughs> he loved them. We had to buy them. <laughs> Mr. Jha is such a warm and funny bloke, so me and Longmu wanted to know how he got from the old district to being one of the most successful businessmen in Heilongjiang province. Oh, that's a runner. Because I lived at the very centre of the business district, I was influenced at an early age growing up in such a commercial community. I learned to become a businessman. I was among the first individual businessmen after the reform and openness policy. I made my first pot of gold in 1987. That was when I started a shop selling building materials for new buildings. At that time, individuals couldn't afford vehicles, so I delivered the building materials using a tricycle. 
Look at that, in front of us. That's exactly what I did at the time. My business developed fast. I used my money to realize my childhood dreams, such as buying a good bike and a watch and decent clothes. Even the clothes I was wearing today were from the fashions of the old days. You can't buy them anywhere nowadays. I lived in this neighborhood when I was a kid. It was bustling at the time. As Mr. Zhao gave us his backstory, I start to understand that he's a perfect product of this city. He loves the melting pot, he's full of good humor, he's sociable and outgoing. At the end of the tour, Mr. Zha showed us the actual house where he was born and raised. So we pulled up and had our picture taken right on the doorstep. I don't know what me and Lomu have got ourselves into by making a film with Mr. Zha, but I'm sure it will tell us more about what it means to be Harbin through and through. Long Moon Lee have learned from Mr. Zha just what it takes to be big in Harbin. Lots of hard work, passion, and if you're anything like Mr. Zha, a love of wild outfits. Let's do a film together, just a short one. Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> one of Mr. Zha's successes is his Ice Village Resort, which makes a perfect setting for our bit of movie making. Oh. The boss was already warming up with a little bit of classic drama. It's Peking Opera, which tells of the bad old days of robbers and bandits who roamed around the Harbin countryside. Mr. Zha was playing the part of a People's Liberation Army soldier who used a disguise to infiltrate a group of bad guys. Oh, so brilliant. I ain't seen anything like this for years in amateur dramatics. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on. I think it's something to do with the like partisans fighting for the Chinese against the Japanese, terrorising them, like you know, little guerrilla warfare. But it's a face, some of them faces. Let me take a picture. Come here. I know where I've seen those bandits before. It's Mr. Jar's brass band. Mr. Jar was immediately onto a good thing. Not speaking English, and me not speaking any Mandarin, the perfect solution was a silent movie, in the style of his hero, Charlie Chaplin. We agreed a storyline about the olden days of Harbin, where it's all dastardly villains, beautiful women, and handsome heroes. Yeah. And this is a little break in between the filming. We've got lunch. Lunch with the crew, you know, you know, I like to mix with the crew, yeah, when I'm on set, yeah, yeah. 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 But it's brilliant, isn't it? Look, this, is, this isn't even a film set, this is his little town. It's like yeah, a museum or something. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> we discussed and plotted over a heavy actor's lunch, and then we went to work. So, check out our film. You're getting a world premiere of A Hero in Harbin.
After all that messing about, me and Long Moo headed back. But on the way, I spotted some very strange looking buildings on the skyline. And that's the, uh, where the power station was. Yeah, the power station. The reason why Harbin is such a multicultural city is because the railway brought everybody here, you know, mainly welcome guests, but sadly, some unwelcome. This railway here was built by the Japanese Imperial Army and it leads, sadly, to like a chemical um, plant where they experimented with chemical warfare. This is Unit 731 and it's, it's a sad place, I'm afraid to say. Unit 731 was set up by the Japanese Imperial Army to develop chemical and biological weapons which were then used all over China. The sick thing about this is that I'm standing here in this building, I've got all these layers on and I'm still freezing. And this is the frostbite unit. So these buildings are re giant refrigerators where they used to get live bodies in and experiment on them, freeze them right to the point of death just to see what frostbite did to the body. And then keep the people alive because they didn't want their bodies. Oh, unbearable, unbelievable. Unit 731 is where multicultural harbing came to an end and the defeated Japanese Imperial Army tried to destroy all evidence of this place. But they didn't succeed and these few buildings are preserved as a warning against the horrors of war. So this is the names of all the victims? Yeah, so they just released all the documents found the name by name, like uh, 1467 names, and some uh, Russian people. Right, yeah, so and, uh, it was Russian and Chinese? And Korean. Korean, okay. Yeah, totally 3,000 here, so. Yeah. All killed, all killed. This little memorial here is the last bit of the tour. And to me, this is a beautiful thing and such a positive thing as well. This was donated by the people of Japan, but not the government, who still have not apologised to the Chinese, but the people of Japan got together because they felt so ashamed, they actually erected a memorial for the people that had died here in the camp. Fantastic. The Harbin people are not bitter about their past. Their tough history has only made them stronger. You're the boy. Yeah, I did see you helping. My hand was broken. <laughs> I had it with Hertz yesterday. You are an embarrassment. After the war, Harbin was rebuilt, and its return to normality meant that the people could enjoy the pleasures which only peacetime could bring. And one of their biggest pleasures was ice hockey. <laughs> Finally, I get to take on Longmu at a sport that he loves. It's fast, furious, and full of surprises. Time to get changed, yeah? Yeah. Can you turn around? Stop looking. Now I understand why hockey jersey is so big. Can't see anything. Fat boy, go ahead. Go quick. No one said anything about skating. Got a quick lesson on the finer points of staying upright on the ice. Then they taught me how to skate, but they forgot to show me how to stop. <laughs> Next, I was coached in the art of goalkeeping. Oh. <laughs> yeah! She's like disco dancing. Long Moo finally got his chance and took a point-blank slap shot. <laughs> but then he gathered the lads and they all got stuck in. I'm sure I heard the Mandarin words for target practice.
After all the action and emotional wrench, me and Longmu were ready to enjoy our last day in Harbin and the New Year's celebrations. Me and Longmu Lee had done enough winter sports, done enough dressing up. We wanted to get out and celebrate the last night of New Year. And in this city, it was bound to be special. We kicked off New Year's Eve at a big festival in the snow. Oh, that, that is an ice sculpture, because you see all the sculptures all around the city, blocks of ice. Oh, they're all right, but look, oh, hey, no, that no. thing is amazing. <laughs> New Year is always a good way to understand the way a city works. And in Harbin, it's a day where the people really show their spirit. This is what I love about this festival. If it had been like in England, it'd be quite stiff and the organisers I'd have been kicked out like years ago. Not because I'm Western, yeah. anyone can join in. Here in Harbin, it's just so, so chilled and so relaxed. Oh, come on, Ian, you can do this. See what I mean? Yeah, man. <laughs> anyone, anyone can join in, know what I mean? Anybody. Come on, come on, come on. They, they don't care, it's brilliant. Longmu tried to show me how to dance, but I thought we'd better leave it to the experts. And at the centre of the action was our old friend, Mr. Ja, boiling up some New Year dumplings. We got Chinese rice dumpling. It's got yuan xiao. They're like little glue balls. They're so sticky. And then for like uh, put family together, who year and happiness. For example, inside, inside our sweet sugar, right? Yeah. Which means that we we are family together, and then we have happiness year and I have sweet year. Yeah. Just like family life. Yeah, that's right. That's sticky right. but sweet. Yeah. Of course, with Mr. Jia as the master of ceremonies, it was not long before the brass band kicked in. After the last dance, there was only one thing needed to start the new year with a bang. More gunpowder. We're on the streets of our fireworks because this yep. is the last day of the festival where the public are allowed to let off fireworks anywhere and everywhere. Whoa! <laughs> where, where shall I put these? No, 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 no. Oh. Oh. It was shooting up into their window. That's probably why it's a bit dangerous for it to be on the streets. Right, let's do this now. Where's my hat? Hold off because we strapped it to that thing. Shot up on that balcony, you can see where the marks are, and all the family come out and told us off. No one right. there's upset. <laughs> Last night of the new year is the best time to check out the stuff which Harbin is famous for the International Ice Sculpture That's Festival. Quite funny, isn't it? Yeah, because the China was a symbol of the night dragons. In the legend of says China made it by the night dragons. China was made by nine dragons, yeah? yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's only six there. Uh, seven Where? in the middle. No, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six? Maybe it's on one back, I think. So everything's made out of ice, then? Yeah, that's right. So you've got ice sculptures, ice slides, 
ice lights, ice castles, ice creams. Look at this, fantastic. We just got into Ice World. This is the best view of the whole of the ice village. Every single building is made out of ice. It is an amazing complex, yeah? Come on, let's get to Iceland. Ooh. Longmu invited us to join some friends, but we had to get there with a box of fireworks before the stroke of midnight. Make way for the box of fireworks. It's brilliant. In England, the box of fireworks is like, you know, you've got loads in, you take them out. But here, a box is a box. That is one big firework. Ah! Part of my journey in Harbin has been amazing. And I never thought that a Chinese city would have so much mixed history. I didn't think that a crazy businessman could teach me so much about having fun. It just goes to show you should never judge a people's warmth by the temperature of their river. Thanks for showing me, Harvin. No it's been an absolute pleasure, man. I've okay. loved it, man. Yeah, you I... are crazy, yeah? Oh, really? Thank right, you. Well, the thing that I love about Harvin Please. is the people are out of control. Okay. They're so full of life. I thought that people would be quite quiet, quite demure, you know, yeah. common estate, yeah, all it's of it. Yeah, it's good weather, right? But here, yeah. everyone... Woo! Yeah! yeah! It's fantastic. Yeah, thank oh, you. I love thank you for wait. coming. Come back. Oh, really? Yeah. Or come back anytime you yeah. want. But less of the, the only negative is uh -huh. the rice wine, yeah? Oh, really? No more rice wine. You like that? I don't like it. I do like it.